As a single father, I have to balance everything. No one asks me, how do you do it? Are you going to be okay? No one asks you that? And you're a single dad? And I'm a single dad. No one asks me that. Sorry, I have to interrupt yeah. and say that that pisses me off. One of the hardest things I've found in my business is balancing everything. And let me give you a bit of a background. Being a single father of two uh, teenage girls, going and being, being dad for them, running a business, working with your business partner, taking care of your clients, growing your business, understanding about things that are beyond your own natural abilities, and then focusing on me, developing myself as a human being and juggling all these different things. It is intense at times. And I always want to know when people are starting off or when they've built as much as you've built in your business, how the heck do you balance everything? <laughs> what balance? I don't have any balance. Work-life balance. Complete bullshit. Balance is bullshit. I'm glad we can swear on in this forum. <laughs> <laughs> so thank totally. you for bringing fuck up nice <laughs> to the table. Totally. <laughs> I fully support profanity. <laughs> For a lot of reasons, I've kind of created a nice groove for myself where my kids are a part of what I do. I create content with them. They try on the rompers. They see me work and, you know, I'll be on a conference call and my girls will be beside me. You know, they'll say, I want to work with you, mommy, and they'll be coloring. And meanwhile, you know, I'm doing business and it's kind of a blend. I've literally been like, okay, I got to do this interview and I'm literally changing a diaper. Like, like two seconds before, right? And I'm like, nobody gave me a textbook on how to balance this right now. You know, you get a call and you're, you know, maybe you have kids or there's some big problem that just got put on your plate that you didn't even know was gonna happen that day. There's no balance in that. You just simply say, okay, here's the problem. I need to find a solution and we need to get this done. And it doesn't look pretty, but you get it done at the end of the day. I get asked to speak to groups of women and I always start with, you know, I am a business owner. I am a wife. I am a mom. I'm a sister. I'm all the things, right? I have a son and right now he is not the most important thing in the world to me. And you know, when you're talking to a room full of women and you say it like that, you can actually hear a pin drop and like, oh my gosh, what did she just say? Did she just say she doesn't love her child? I'm like, no, that's not what I said. You, maybe we can call it living in the moment or we can say that life is about, we all juggle eight to 10 balls at a time. It's just which one needs the care at this moment. Yeah. And whether you're male or female, you still, you're juggling balls. Not always successfully, because sometimes the ball <laughs> falls and shatters, and then there's a, you know, it's like, oh, okay. And that's your fuck up, yeah, right? Exactly. And then you clean it up, and you learn yeah. something from it. Exactly. And you yeah. trust still no balance. Yeah. <laughs> totally agree with you. That work-life balance thing, I think, is, is, is not accurate at all. I'll give you an example. Just last night, like, it, literally, I, you work all day. You're in meeting after meeting. You're, you're, you got to do some media pieces there. And then in between media pieces, I got to cook dinner, have dinner ready, and then my my eldest daughter has to do jujitsu, so I'm literally her sparring partner. Then in between that, I'm doing another conversation with my business partner. Then I'm going back and watching Les Miserables with my youngest daughter while at the same time <laughs> getting all documents on for my for my business. And I, there's no such thing as you know balance. And I understand time structure equals time freedom, but that's where the yep. structure comes into play. It's not it's not a balance. It's integrated. It's just life. There was a comment made earlier, Shashi, about venture capitalists and how they ask female entrepreneurs, how are you going to balance everything? Mm -hmm. Yep. That pisses me off for two reasons. <laughs> Number one, where the fuck do you have the balls to actually say something like that? Mm -hmm. Number two, how do men do it? Oh. As a single father, I have to balance everything. No one asks me, how do you do it? Are you going to be okay? No one asks you that and you're a single dad? And I'm a single dad. No one asks me that. No one has that kind of a, a viewpoint on me, but they have a viewpoint on a female, regard, single, single mom or married. It doesn't matter. There's that bias towards that. Sorry, I have to interrupt and yeah. say that that pisses me off, it that does. people don't have compassion for men. Mm -hmm. That's, that's my point. understand and consider how hard it is to be a parent, period, Never mind being a single parent and how we have so little compassion for the men around us in business and the things that they're being challenged with. I don't know what it is as society. We don't stop and check in with men and it's not okay to not be okay, mm -hmm. period. And it's certainly never okay to not be okay if you're a man. I like to do everything kind of on the 24 hour level and then a 30 day level, meaning 
I take these slots in the day and I say, okay, what is the non-negotiables? Okay, during this time, okay, I wanna go to sleep. I wanna have some quiet time with my wife, my kids. Okay, non-negotiable. And a lot of the time it happens because I said, okay, this is it. But I always know in the back of my head that Ryan, should anything happen, just know that you are capable of getting through this and it's gonna be okay at the end of the day. I remember first meeting Shashi and somebody asked her, how are you prioritizing like your work-life balance? Like you, you're just doing it all beautifully. Him being somebody that also owns a company, two companies, and then also does law, I love her response was balance doesn't exist, like this whole work-life balance. And I felt like a brick came from my chest, was lifted, and I was so mm. happy she said that because it's true. There's this false narrative of entrepreneurship as some luxurious, thing that <laughs> that you can just enter into and it's going to be this nine to five beautiful job and I, I'll never have to work again because I'll be a millionaire the day I open my door and I'm like such bullshit it's time to wake up no it's not nine to five it's six in the morning or actually for me it's five four fifty in the morning mm -hmm. till one in the morning mm -hmm. uh, of work me having my own businesses I could sit there and I could create things and uh, we would sell it and I would have time, I'd have freedom, I would be able to wear jogging pants or no pants or whatever <laughs> I wanted to do. And then it, the reality is, is that you work so hard and all you do is work. And 90% um, of what you're doing is the stuff that you didn't want to be doing and the 10% is the fun stuff. And if you're not willing to dedicate that level of time and energy to it, I'm, I'm not going to say you're not going to be successful, but don't go into entrepreneurship because you want a life balance. Those two words don't connect, I don't believe. Can I, can I challenge that? Because I'm going to go to Jen on that uh -oh. one. Okay, I want to challenge that because <laughs> there are entrepreneurs who are going to be consultants. They're going to coach. They're going to do independent work with individuals on their own business, on their own terms, on their own time frame, making whatever income it may be. It may not be seven figures, but it's enough for them. And they're happy with that. But that may not be the four o'clock in the morning to midnight run that they're doing all day. When you see this, Jen, when you hear about, as an entrepreneur, you have to hustle and you have to work those long hours. Is that still relevant today or is, just making enough, enough. I think it depends on who you are. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm listening to Amanda and Shashi talking about balance and not liking that word. And I often talk about I don't like that word, but I'm gonna challenge it and look at it from the other side. I have all the balance I want. I have the mix of things that I want. And at any time it's not working for me, I, I'm empowered to do something about it. I'm a big believer in having a balanced lifestyle. Okay. So I'm not the guy that says, you gotta go 100 hour weeks, everyone's working weekends, no matter what, we gotta get through to this next phase, come hell or high water. I don't think that way. I think build a purpose and create a very clear vision of where, why we're excited about this company, the why factor. Mm -hmm. And then people will work to that kind of organic pursuit without any push. I'm basically telling these, these people that I work with, you have to go on vacation. Like I'm forcing them on yeah. vacation because they're that passionate and that excited about the business. I love being an entrepreneur and I work a lot because I choose to work a lot because I'm doing things I love to do. I also volunteer in community. I serve on a number of boards. I mentor. I'm on some advisory committees because they're things that I love to do with people I love to do it with. Yeah. I also love to spend time with my daughter and my husband and golf and ski. I have a lot of things I love to do and I'm in the driver's seat of creating the life that I want to have. I find going to the gym or mm. a massage or hitting the spa does not get my mind off of things. No, no. So I actually have to play in team sports. So I play hockey. Oh. So when I play hockey, I can't think about anything else but the game. <laughs> so I'm forced to take my time away from what I do in my job and my business and everything else and every, all the other stresses on my life and just play the game of hockey. For me, being off balance is actually usually an indicator of me evolving. And so I try to lean into that feeling of discomfort when I'm feeling uncomfortable, when I'm feeling stretched and challenged in all kinds of ways. It's when I know that I'm growing and really what else are we here to do, you know, but evolve as humans. I think that people are constantly sweeping things under the rug mm -hmm. and then they get into these, these perpetual terminal problems and relationships. And then it, it chips away and erodes 
the, the, the mutual respect. So you know what? Let's containerize. D Dale Carnegie, he says, live life in daytight compartments. And that's and and I love that because that's that's what we try and do. So this is a this is a compartment, and in this compartment, you know, we talk, we resolve, we fight, and then it's done, and then we move on, and usually we leave feeling much better. Balance I look at is: Are you creating what you want, mm -hmm. or are you reacting to all the shoulds in the messages of everyone around you? That's that's the key thing: creating what you want. I love it. I remember when my business partner and I started our, our practice together, we had a saying, work like nobody does so you can live like nobody can. Mm. At the beginning, it was about, we just got to do more, more hours. We'll do more than everybody else. And then it turned into not hours, but do it better. And then it turned into have a better experience for your, your employees and your clients. So it evolved, but it's still work like nobody does. Because I think when I was speaking to an entrepreneurial group a few months back, I said, in a normal distribution curve, you've got two tails. You've got a group of people who will never understand what it's like to be even employed, forget about an employer. And then you've got a small percentage of people who are the employers, the entrepreneurs. It's so small of a group. We are a minority of a minority of individuals in this city alone, forget about the nation. It's hard for people on regular social media platforms or on the street to understand what an entrepreneur goes through. They'll never get it. They are the 7.5 hours a day, 37 and a half hour week employee. And that's okay. That's not, a, that's not a negative to them. They just don't get what it's like to be an entrepreneur. And then, like you were saying, Jen, they're throwing in their bias. And so work-life balance. Oh, you should be home with your family. Oh, are you babysitting your kids? They're my kids. Why would I babysit them? What kind of goddamn comment is that, right? Like, and, and all those things that come out, it's coming from that part of the curve. Well, they have no idea what it's like to be in the, in the club of entrepreneurship. Thank you for watching the Chromali Exchange. Make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss an episode. You can also follow me on social media at Faisal Carmali, where we can continue the business conversation.